Hey everyone, Dan here. In this diving deep tutorial, we're going to talk about how to use browse in a full on real workflow. In the previous getting started video, we kind of gave you the lay of the land. We showed you where the features lived and how to access them. In this video, I really want to show you how you'd actually put it all together in a common workflow. So we're going to start from the download. I've got a memory card here. Let me plug it into my computer. There we go. Now, if you notice right over here in the local drive section, that memory card popped up as a drive. The next thing I want to do is I want to download the photos from that. I'm going to use the import dialog to do that. So I'm going to go up to the file menu and select import. Import helps you select which photos you want to download and where you want to download them to. It also gives you the ability to add other things like metadata on the fly. So let's take a look at this. I've got about 129 photos and this was photographed out on a little trip around town with some of the guys from on one. And if I scroll down, you'll notice that it kind of splits. There's actually two different locations in here. I shot in the morning at the Japanese garden and in the afternoon at one of the local breweries. So I kind of want to actually download these to two different places. I want to do two different jobs from this. So here's what I'm going to do. I want to split these into two chunks. I want to remove all the ones at the bottom. So I'm going to find where the ones of the Japanese garden stopped right about here. So I'm going to select all the ones that don't match from here down to here, and I'm just going to hit the space bar to deselect those. To select that range, I just did a shift click. Now I hit the space bar, and all of those become deselected. So now only the ones with the check marks in the corner are going to get downloaded. Next thing I need to do is pick where I want to download those to. So I'm going to go to the destination pane, and we're going to select that. Now for me, I have a folder called my inbox that's inside of my images folder. And that's where all my new photos go that I'm going to download. So all I have to do now is just create a new folder for them. So I'm just going to call these Japanese gardens. Now I have the ability to back these up at the same time and to organize them based on month or day. I'm just going to leave those all in one folder and I'm not going to worry about backing them up. I use a whole system backup so everything on my computer gets backed up anyway. Now, the next thing I can do is rename those. The out of the camera name isn't all that useful. So let's go through and I'm going to rename them. I'll turn rename on and I'm going to use a text string here at the beginning. I'm just going to type in where this was. I'm going to see these are Japanese gardens. You could also add in things like another serial number. You could put in the date that they were created if you want to as well. The naming scheme is kind of up to you. The next thing you could do is you can also add metadata on the fly. Now, because these are all shot at the same place, I could add some metadata to help that out. So let's come down here. I'm going to add into the keywords. Let's type in Japanese gardens. Let's add Portland. I'll add Oregon. Now, the other thing I can do is if I've created a metadata preset, I can add that at the same time. I've already created a preset in here that has all of my contact metadata. So it's going to put in my name, my copyright, my address, all that for me. So I'll just select my contact metadata preset. There you go. You can see it's filled out the contact metadata for me right off the bat. I could also change the capture date. I don't need to in this case, but I could come down to edit capture date and change the date, especially if I was traveling in a different time zone and I forgot to change the date on my camera. I don't need that. And I could also add photo settings on the fly if I wanted to. I don't need that option for this. All right, so here we go. It's going to take that 102 of the 129 photos. It's going to download them to this folder that I've created inside of my inbox. It's going to rename them at my metadata. Let's go. All right, you can see it's automatically flipped over that folder and you can see those photos as they come in. You can see that it's renamed them the way that I want to. And when I click on one, you can see that contact metadata that I've added to them. Down on the bottom, you can see the progress. You can see how far it is throughout that download process. I can now go and actually start my next download right away. I'm gonna go up to the import dialog again. Now I'm just gonna select the ones at the bottom. So we're gonna select none and I'll select the ones at the bottom that I actually want and I'll turn those on. So now I'm just going to download the ones from the second batch. I'm going to put those in a different folder here. I'm just going to call this brewery. I'm going to change the name to match. And I'll change the keywords to match. You notice how it helps 
pick the right words for me automatically from my list. All right, there we go. We've got the second batch ready to go. I'll hit import and it'll import those to another folder at the same time, it's still importing the other ones. How cool is that? All right. Once everything's downloaded, you might want to go through and add some individual metadata to some of the photos that are a little bit different. For example, I've got a few photos in here that are textures. I want to identify those with the keyword texture so that I can find them in the future when I'm looking for textures. So I'm just going to select some of these photos in here that are textures. I'll just quickly scroll down and any of the ones that are more of a texture, I can just add another keyword to those to make it easier to find them in the future. There we go. Let's just add the keyword texture in here. There we go. Now I can search for those and find them easier. Another handy thing to do is to look for any panoramas or HDR brackets that I've created and group those together. So right here, here's a sequence that I shot as a bracket. I actually shot two of the same scene in seven shot brackets. So I'm just going to select all of those and create a bracket. Let's start out here and I'm just going to go seven frames. There's one two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's one bracket. I've selected those. Now I'll just right click and I'm going to say add a subfolder. It automatically uses the name of the super selected item and I'm just going to use the move items into subfolder. So now it'll take that bracket and collapse it down into a single folder for me. Now I'll just select that next series of photos, that next bracket right here, and I'll do the same thing. I'll just right click. I'll put those into another subfolder for that bracket. You can see how each of those brackets that get collapsed down into a subfolder, I can still see the name of the photo and I can see the poster frame, the first frame that's in that folder. And if I double click to go inside of it, I'll see the photos that live inside of that folder. And I can even pick which photo I want to have represent the top. Let's say I want this photo to represent the folder. So I'll use the set folder preview option. There we go. I think I had a panorama in here too, so let's do the same thing. I'll scroll down, find any other HDR or panorama photos, and nest those together as well. There we go. Now, the next thing I want to do is go through and do my tagging and rating. I want to pick out the ones that are my favorites, the ones that I want to do additional work on or that I want to share with other folks. Everybody has their own way of doing this. You could use the star ratings, or you could use keywords or color flags or the like buttons. I like the like button. That's what I will typically use. And you can even do the like and the dislike, these guys right up here, using the P or the X key. P makes it a pick when you like, and X is a reject is when you throw away. Or if you make a mistake, you can hit the U button, and that'll set it back to its default unselected state. So now what you'll do is you'll probably go into something like detail view where you have a nice full screen view or what I like is a film strip view. This lets me actually see the other photos around it and I can arrow through and pick out the ones that I really like, the ones that I want to do something with in the future. So there you go. That's a pretty good one. I'll hit the P key to hold on to that one. And if it's one I don't really like, you know, I shot this as a texture, but it's not a very interesting texture to me. I'll hit the X key. And that's what I'm going to reject. That's something I'm going to get rid of. I don't really care for that one. So I'll just kind of arrow through these, see if there's ones that I like more than another, and we'll mark those. And yeah, those are kind of boring, but you know, this one's kind of nice. Let's hit that P key. I'll mark that as a pick, one that I want to use in the future. You know, that one's not very good. X key, X key, all these ones that just didn't really work out for me. So those three that were backlit, I can't really make a good photo of those, so I'll throw them out. So I'll just kind of keep arrowing through these. These are all middle of the road. There's something I could do with them. It's kind of this shy little blossom. I kind of like that one. That one we'll keep. And, you know, those ones didn't really work out for me. So I'm just going to go X and X and X and X. And that will let me throw those all out very easily. Here I am kind of playing around with different shutter speeds and polarizers. Those are all good for illustration. Which one do I like? Kind of like that smooth one. We'll give that a P. So you kind of see I'm just quickly going through those photos, picking out ones that I like versus ones that I don't like. I'm going to skip ahead. You don't need to see me go through and edit all of these photos. All right, so I've gone through. I've done my ratings and labels. Now what I want to do is I want to get rid of the ones that I don't like. So an easy way to do that is to go down here to the filter menu. I'm going to turn that on, and I'm going to hit the X button. This is going to show me just the ones I don't like. And now I have the choice of what I want to do with them. I could get rid of them. That's what I like to do. I don't really see a need to keep photos I don't like. So I'm just going to select all of these guys. I'm going to hit the delete key and I'm going to throw those away. 
Now, I know some of you are probably freaking out. That's heresy to go through and, and throw out photos, but it doesn't bother me. I got plenty of photos here that I like. If you don't like to do that, you can always just use the filter to only show things in your folder that are either like or in the unrated state. So basically, it's going to hide those rejected photos instead. Now, I'm going to go through and do a couple quick edits. I'm going to build a couple HDRs and a couple panoramas of the ones that I like, and then I'm going to show you how I would actually export those out. That's kind of the next step. I'm going to skip over the editing section. This is more about browsing the editing, and then we'll come back and I'll show you the results. All right, so now I've gone through, I've edited some of my favorite photos. I created a couple HDRs. I created a panel. I made my edits on those. I'm kind of happy with what I created from that day, and now I want to share it. So let me show you how you can find all of those photos quickly and how you can easily batch export those out to a shareable format. Now, I keep all of my photos inside of a catalog folder. That helps make this easy. Because I have subfolders inside of it, if it's inside of a catalog folder, I can use the show subfolder contents option. This will show me all of the photos in a flat list rather than a list with the folders inside of it. So you notice like those HDR brackets that we created and we put inside of a subfolder earlier, I can see all of the photos are inside of those at once. So now I can see all the photos from the shoot regardless of the subfolders. Now all I need to do is just filter it based on my favorites, the ones that I added that little like flag to. So I'll come down to filters, I'll turn on the little heart, and there we go. So there's all the photos that I edited for the day. So there's a few of these that are CR2. So those are raw photos that I just have normal, non-destructive settings on. Here's an on photo. That's an HDR photo I created by merging multiples together. And here's a TIFF photo that was a pano that I merged multiple photos. And they all have non-destructive settings on them. You notice the little plus minus badge. That means if I went and looked at these photos on disk, they wouldn't look like this. These are just the settings that we see here inside of Onward Photo Raw. In order to get versions out to other people that they can see, we need to create an export copy copy of them. So I'm just going to select all of these photos and I'll click on the export button. Now I can select how big they're going to be, what format they're going to be, and where they're going to go. Now because I want to share these online, I certainly don't need to export the full size, especially on a panel that could be like 10,000 pixels wide. It's going to be way too big. So I'm going to use the long edge option. I'm going to set it to pixels and say, let's say 1500 pixels. That's usually big enough to share online. I'm going to sharpen them a little bit. That helps make sure that when they're viewed on a monitor, they look nice. I'm going to save them as JPEGs with 80% quality. I'm going to have it convert them to sRGB. I'm going to have it save those files to my desktop for me as well. If this is a common setting I use all the time, I can save it as a preset. So I'm going to call this small JPEGs to desktop. That makes it easy for me to get these exact settings over and over again. Now I'll hit the export button and it'll save all of those photos straight to my desktop. And now on my desktop, you'll see those photos that I've exported. Let's take a closer look. I can quickly see those different photos that I created. And I could share them however I wanted to. To make it easy for me to find this collection of photos again, I could create an album. So I have all those selected. I can just drag them right over here to where it says drag here for a new album. And now I can give it a name. I'm going to call this my Japanese garden favorites. And if I wanted to send those to the On One mobile app so I could view them on my iPhone or my iPad, I would just click the publish button right here at the end. Now I'll be able to take those photos with me wherever I go. All right, there's the basic workflow of how to use On One Browse. We showed you how to download your photos, how to add metadata to them, how to organize and cull them, picking out your favorites, then how to create an album and share them. Thanks for watching.